This message goes out to the youth. This is your world now. The people on here, the ones that are supposed to be the elders, the responsible adults, need to allow the youth to come into this platform and for them to shape their world. What this sector does to the youth is already taking away the privilege that we had when we were younger and we were allowed to shape our world. We were allowed to do whatever we saw that was needed to be done in order to make our world the way that it is. I want to personally apologize to the youth because I didn't work hard enough to make a change to leave the youth now a world that is more loving more caring to give them more opportunity to make something of themselves but now this world is in your hands It's time for you all to shape this world into the world you want it to be. All of the speaking on one another, all of the hate that is being spoken on one another, it has to end. We should be encouraging the youth to seek equality and education and financial responsibility and to things of positive nature instead of having them sit back and watch the elders bicker and just tear one another down. They're like dry sponges. They're just absorbing what they're hearing from people much older than them. Some people old enough to be their parents. And the youth right now are followers. We need to allow them to be leaders. And be able to stand up on their own instead of alliances with others. And those alliances causes them to have their life turned upside down. That in the short time that they've been here, their personal information them hearing older adults call people out of their name. The most racist people are ourselves. It's not people that don't look like us. It's ourselves 
that sit up and call one another nigga, bitch, whore, black bitches. And we're speaking this knowing that there's people younger that are listening to this. Again, as I was in a replay of Kelly Love, and he had a call in. There was an elder that called in, and she pretty much felt like I did. She didn't know how she fell into this sector. And she didn't call in about the subject matter. She called in to say that she couldn't believe the words that she was hearing, the names that we were calling one another. And all this is under entertainment. That never has she heard black people speak on one another the way that we do. That when we're called the word nigga by someone that's not black, we really need to take a step backwards and look at our behavior, look at our words, look at what we're portraying. You now have gamers that are coming into this sector. These gamers are young adults and they're listening to it. What kind of world do you think that you're leaving now? They're listening to people rename people people that have an illness on them and they take that and use it against them and it's spread all on a platform for anyone to hear it it's got to come a time when people stop And all this is being done for the love of money. That there's a lot of insecure people on here that didn't get the attention when they were younger and they found a way to get that attention in their latter years. The jealousy of one another that one person can't have a nickel more than the next creates just viciousness. And these kids now are coming into this platform ever since they changed. Google Hangouts that now stream labs Twitter all that that they use in order to play games and in order to sit back and speak to one another they are now seeing and hearing all of this in order to stop racism we got to stop hating on one another We can't think that it's okay for us to sit up and call one another a nigga, a whore, or to go to an establishment and be a grown person and sit there for hours and behave in the manner in which we behave. 
and not expect for not only people that are not of your same color, but people of your color are embarrassed and are ashamed. We already are living in a bubble that we all <clears throat> are uneducated, ignorant. We don't know how to express ourselves without using words. We don't know how to disagree and to agree to disagree without leaving a video to come back and be just as nasty as the person was to you. That everything plays out. Everything does. This really is the most I'm going to speak on this platform I've seen people in a year of me absorbing everything that takes place on this platform again it changed my spirit it changed the person who I was by allowing the words and the beef and the cursing people out that that's not the person that I am that's not the way I was raised and that's not the way I was taught to speak to others but we're more detrimental to ourselves than any other race out here. Yes, they have a section in the white community where they beef. But the eyes are sitting right here on us. I just want to know how long do you think a person can be poked and poked and poked until they either kill themselves or they kill the ones that are poking them? You could come into this platform and be a virgin to all of the words that are being said all of the jealousy over nothing absolutely nothing that that jealousy is that of that fallen angel who's walking this earth and collecting souls and vamping off of your positive energy. Those with children, if you think they don't hear, if you think that they don't want going to remember, if you think that they're oblivious to what's going on around them, they aren't. Because for each one of us, that are adults when you sit down and talk you can start remembering things that you saw and that you experienced when you were younger and how it affected you to this point you have people on here that don't have good relationships with their siblings that don't have good relationship with their parents because of something that happened when they were younger. And now they're adults and they still don't have relationships with them. So we have to be mindful 
of what we say and who may fall into this sector and hear our words and how it's going to affect their future. But again, we've yet to wake up. We've yet to realize that this platform is being utilized to keep us at one another's throats. To keep division between one another. To make sure that there's always division, be it because of the complexion of one's skin or the dirty hand that they were dealt as a child. That rather than them going and making peace and having peace within themselves, they take to a platform and they vent that inner anger that they're still holding on to as an adult. Yet they vent it towards other people. Jealousy is a motherfucker. Jealousy is that red eye devil. That you have, you cannot sit up and say that you love your black brothers and sisters, and then turn around and say some of the most foulest things and the most racist things about that person for the person that calls themselves the wrench. Jason. Jason is an example of what the majority of white people see black people as. And if you don't think that your words and your actions aren't making it true, then you need to unplug and you need to deal with real life outside of YouTube. The perception that they have is the image that we're giving out. And it is perception that if you've never been around black people that speak on one another in the way that we do. I have a lot of interracial marriages in my family and I would never want them to come on here and listen to adults speak on each other. I would never want any of the white side of my family to come on here and listen to how we speak on one another. It is a learning experience. And because in one case, the commentator didn't agree with what the person said that called in after the call was over. That viewer was called all kind of stupid bitches, all kind of stupid black bitches, and what kind of world were they living in? 
That's the point. You don't know what kind of world they were living in. You be seven years old and be called a nigger and not know what it means. You fight so that you aren't called a nigger. Or you go in for a job interview. Or you go into an establishment that's all white. And you wonder why. They speak down to you. Or they follow you around the store. And then you have to work triple time. To let them know that you aren't uneducated. That you aren't ignorant. That you don't fit the stereotype that's been put on us. And in order for that stereotype to be changed, it's not up to them to change it. It's up to us. So my prayers are that in 2020, that we each take a step back that we each listen to all of our videos, listen to the words that come out of our mouths, listen to the people that were targeted, look at people that don't have jobs, that did have jobs when they came on here, but because we can do some of the most low down things to one another, they now don't have that. Speaking on others' living situation. Speaking on others' medical issues. Something that they can't change. But using that to hurt them. To dig so deep. To find out information and find out the most information that's going to hurt them to the core. It started off when I came on here as flogger against flogger. It's now turned into vlogger against flogger against viewers. that this subject of racism needs to continue. People's thoughts, opinions, and what they live through needs to be respected. It doesn't make somebody a dumb, stupid bitch because of their opinion or because of how they were raised and what they were taught. Just like a white person coming on here and a perception that they were taught as a child. And then to come on here and they may not be racist, but to come on here and to listen to all the things that are said. I'm not speaking on anyone's child, but we all know that when a woman is pregnant, that there are emotions, that that child inside of them is capable of hearing, that whatever that mother that is carrying that child is going through, that child is going through it too. A child's personality is determined by the age of three. 
So what you see in a three-year-old is what you're going to see as an adult. We got to do better. We got to do better as a people. We can't continue to point the finger at others. We need to stand in the mirror and point that finger right back at us. That civil rights era was a very important era that gave you the right to sit and be on a platform like this. It also gave you the power of choice where at one time you didn't have choice, you were dictated to. And what did you decide to do with that choice? Did you use it in order to build upon what others lost their life for? Or did you use it to tear one another down as our oppressors did? I've always said that black people as a whole suffer from PTSD, which originated from slavery, and it still goes on today. The words that were used against us, we now use it against us. Even the word nigger was used against us, and we've embraced it. And think that it's okay for us to speak to one another in the same way that we were treated and spoken on during and after slavery. So just how far have we come For those that lost their lives, for those that walked, for those that boycotted, for those that did everything in order to be looked at as a human being and not an animal. We're exhibiting the same behavior that was used against us. So how many are going to sit back when that time changes and reflect on what we have done to help change this world? Or are we just going to sit back and wallow in the materialistic things that we've accomplished. I can no longer sit back and listen to other black people down and use the same words that white people use against us. I can no longer sit back knowing that it's youth that are sitting back listening to us. We used to be a village that took care of one another, that helped to raise one another now we've become selfish that we don't look at the youth 
as being part of our children. That village needs to return. That education, and I don't mean textbook, I mean life. Education needs to be expressed to them so they can appreciate those before them. Because one day, you're going to become an ancestor to them. You right now are their guiders and their teachers. But what are you teaching them? So 2020 may pass around. When you start studying, you realize that a year consisted of 360 days. And as usual, man changed things to suit man that it became 365 days that new year is when everything is reborn again things that become or things that hibernate until that new year arrives, comes back to life. Which would be the time of rebirth of everything. Which is the equinox that we call spring. That we start teaching them how things were turned around, how things that were being taught and still being taught is not the truth, to encourage them to even when they raise their children, to homeschool them. Homeschool them to the point to where they're not indoctrinated and to what they want us to know. That they're capable of doing anything. It's just who's willing to sacrifice their pleasure in order to build the future. So for my youth out there, again, be careful what you let in your ears. Be careful what you speak. Start planning for your future. We all are born to die. And what legacy do you want to leave behind? What footprints are you going to leave behind for your children? What type of world are you going to leave for them? There's so much going on in the world that's being done right before our faces that no one is speaking on. But those with ears will hear. Those with eyes shall see. 
those who are empathists will start a platform that is nothing but positivity and not allowing any negativity to realize that we are one with the universe and that this universe is changing so very fast. So to the youth out there, the college students out there, those who may have started college and still have years to complete, take your time on YouTube and educate yourself on the elders that are no longer here. Think about everything that you have lived to see. Think about those that we have lost. And what their legacy is. Everything that they did wasn't in vain. Everything they did was documented, but it's slowly being erased from YouTube. We're in a world of technology now. And once again, it is feeding you what they want you to know. So, elders, please guide these youth in the right way. Yes, a lot of changes are happening with YouTube. Yes, they're pushing streaming. They're now starting to compete against cable companies. Yes, a lot of people that are taking out their streaming are complaining about this sector and not knowing how they got into this sector, not understanding why Google is allowing this sector to continue. Yes, there's going to be a lot of pages shut down. the female bloggers that did a panel on how black females can get along work together and show that black girl magic that was ordained upon us by the most high Our men have been torn down so much that we have to help to build them back up. And this is a platform that consists mainly of women. Some single parents with sons. That in today's world, they have so many obstacles in their way. So rather than bickering, fighting, hating on one another, to come together, to erase those obstacles that they have on them now. I claim that it's going to happen. I believe that it's going to happen. And those speaking positive, don't even bother looking at the comments. 
Continue speaking your positive words. Don't change the person that you are to fit in. Continue being who you are. Don't allow anyone to break your spirit. With your children, don't allow anyone to break their spirit. 